subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chonzom. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 15th of September. Viral and dengue fever cases bite Indian states amid COVID deluge. One month after fall of Kabul, residents say Taliban brought peace despite minor grumblings. And Nepal government faces financial deadlock as budget fails to get through parliament. And now for all the details. COVID-19 cases may be receding in India, but there seems to be no respite on the health front as a rise in patients of dengue and viral fever has been overwhelming hospitals in several states. Doctors have said the situation is getting worse day by day. Cases of COVID-19 may be receding in India, but there seems to be no respite on the health front as several Indian states have been battling a rise in patients of dengue and viral fever. The most populous northern state of Uttar Pradesh has been the worst hit with nearly 60 deaths due to viral fever in Firozabad district alone, and dozens of deaths in other parts of the state have been suspected to be due to dengue since the start of September. Authorities have set up special pediatric wards as most of the patients are children. Jatar Mari Denguke Lachanoke Satiare, Uspe, forty percent cases may positive Nikolajin could confirm his in Gilliam Elijah test karate. Meanwhile, West Bengal state has also been reporting dozens of suspected cases of dengue and viral fever. Around seventy children are currently admitted in Siliguri District Hospital with fever and respiratory problems and the situation is very worse an official said situation is very worse number of patient admitted in the ward is now three times of the normal and the ward is very much congested and small babies are coming with respiratory problem respiratory distress fever and we are trying to support all of them but we are not having in such a position to manage a huge number of patients like this. Dengue is common in India and the number of cases generally peak during the monsoon rains. Symptoms include a sudden fever, headache, muscle and joint pains. There is no vaccine for dengue which kills an estimated 20,000 people each year and infects up to 100 million according to the World Health Organization. In news from Afghanistan, it has been a month since the Taliban swept to power in Afghanistan, seizing the capital Kabul with barely a fight. Residents in Kabul say that peace has returned to Afghanistan and the people were satisfied despite some minor dissatisfaction. Meanwhile, Afghanistan's acting foreign minister has called for international donors to restart aid as the Taliban government seeks to shore up the finances of a country heavily reliant on external assistance. Residents in Afghan capital of Kabul on Wednesday said that peace has returned to Afghanistan and the people were satisfied despite some minor dissatisfaction one month since the Taliban had taken over. Taliban fighters first entered Kabul on August 15, completing a lightning offensive that saw provincial capitals fall to the insurgents like dominoes. The United States and Western countries are in a difficult balancing act in the aftermath of the Taliban's victory, reluctant to recognize the Islamist group while accepting the reality that they will have to engage with them to prevent a looming humanitarian crisis. Another Kabul resident was concerned about the banking system. 
په یو شی خپه چې رښتیا خبرې چې هغه وردوم دا هغه نظام هم یو ډېر قوي نظام هم درلوده خو خدای دې هغه بیرته راولي هغه د مونږ اردو د مونږ نظام دې خدای بیرته راولي خوشاله په دې چې امنیت ډېر ده Afghanistan's acting foreign minister on Tuesday called for international donors to restart aid as the Taliban government seeks to shore up the finances of a country heavily reliant on external assistance after 40 years of near continuous war. Following the insurgent Taliban's return to power after sweeping away government's forces last month, a majority of international donors have frozen aid. He also called for more assistance from multilateral donors including the World Bank, Asian Development Bank and the Islamic Development Bank. After the takeover, the United States froze Afghanistan's dollar denominated bank deposits that make up the majority of the central bank's reserves. US Secretary of State Antony Blinken defended Biden administration's Afghanistan withdrawal during a congressional hearing on Tuesday. Amid intelligence warnings that Al Qaeda could soon again use Afghan soil to plot attacks on the United States, Blinken indicated the Taliban had not fully severed its links with Al Qaeda and Washington will continue to hold them accountable. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken defended Biden administration's Afghanistan withdrawal during the Senate Foreign Relations Committee meeting on Tuesday, which came amid intelligence warnings that Al Qaeda could soon again use Afghan soil to plot attacks on the United States. Although Blinken was not asked directly about the U.S. intelligence assessments, he said the Taliban had not fully severed its links with the group, and Washington will continue to hold them accountable. Taliban is committed to prevent terrorist groups from using Afghanistan as a base for external operations that could threaten the United States or our allies, including Al Qaeda and ISIS-K. We'll hold them accountable for that. That does not mean that we will rely on them. We will maintain a vigilant uh, effort to monitor threats. Several lawmakers during the meeting raised questions over the intelligence about the collapse of the U.S.-backed Afghan government. and also demanded reassessment of ties with Pakistan over its subversive role in harboring Taliban. Blinken blamed the previous Trump administration for its February 2020 peace deal with the Taliban that he said had tied Biden's hands and led to the withdrawal of international troops and the eventual Taliban takeover of Kabul on August 15. Moving on. A massive protest was recently held by the opposition Jamaat-e-Islami party over shortage and unfair distribution of water in Pakistan's port city Karachi. The protesters claim they also face regular power outages and receive usually high electricity bills despite less consumption. Scores of workers of opposition Jamaat-e-Islami party recently held a massive sit-in protest in Pakistan's port city Karachi over water shortage faced by residents. The protesters including locals raised slogans against the government outside the office of the Karachi Water and Sewerage Board over persistent non-supply of water to several areas of the city. Chief of Karachi chapter of Jamaat-e-Islami Hafiz Naeemun Rahman said that almost entire city faces water crisis due to dilapidated pumping stations that need to be repaired. He blamed both the provincial and federal government of corruption and said despite announcing packages to solve the issue nothing has been implemented so far. Ke is waqt jo pani Karachi ko dastyab hona chahiye us pani mein se bhi aadhe se zyada pani hame nahi mil raha. और उसका सबब यह है कि पंपिंग स्टेशन खराब है पैसे एलोकेट होते हैं और वो पैसे करप्शन की नजर हो जाते हैं पंपिंग स्टेशन दुरुस्त नहीं होते हैं दी ग्रोइंग गैप बिटवीन वाटर सप्लाई एंड डिमांड हैज क्रिएटेड अ वरिंग सिचुएशन इन दी सिटी दी प्रोटेस्टर्स ब्लेम दे आल्सो रिसीव अनयूजुअली हाई इलेक्ट्रिसिटी बिल्स डिस्पाइट लेस कंजम्पशन एंड रेगुलर पावर आउटेजेस इन न्यूज़ फ्रॉम नेपाल The obstruction of the proceedings by Nepal's main opposition, the Communist Party of Nepal Unified Marxist-Leninist has put the Himalayan nation at the risk of facing a financial deadlock as its annual budget has failed to get approved by the parliament on Tuesday. Finance Minister Janardhan Sharma had last week presented a revised budget for the ongoing Nepali fiscal year 2021-22. 
beginning mid-July. K.P. Sharma Oli led erstwhile CPN UML government had introduced the original budget on May 29 through an ordinance. However, Oli's government was ousted from power in July and Sher Bahadur Dioba, head of the Nepali Congress, became the new Prime Minister. The new government tabled the budget ordinance in the parliament on July 18, and with the bill failing to pass in the lower house on time, all government proceedings will come to halt from Wednesday night. However, the next meeting has been scheduled for coming Monday. Ever since the new parliament session began on September 8, the main opposition has resorted to obstructions, accusing Speaker Agni Sapkota of failing to fulfill his duty as an independent presiding officer. Moving on to news from Bangladesh. Educational institutions reopened in Bangladesh cautiously with strict COVID-19 protocols in place after being closed for more than a year as the number of COVID-19 cases continue to dip and more people getting vaccinated. Schools and colleges in Bangladesh have reopened after being closed for more than one and a half years as COVID-19 cases have begun to decline and more people vaccinated. Educational institutions in capital Dhaka and elsewhere in the country reopened on Sunday cautiously with strict COVID-19 protocols in place, including wearing face masks and limited seating capacity for social distancing in classrooms. For the first time in 18 months, students were seen in the uniforms and attending physical classes. In an effort to curb the spread of the coronavirus, Bangladesh closed all educational institutions in March last year. Bangladesh's Education Minister Deepu Moni warned of stern action against those violating the COVID-19 protocols after visiting an institution in Dhaka on Sunday. Earlier, she had said that only candidates of public examinations would attend classes every day after the reopening. Students of other classes would have in-person classes once or twice every week. Since March last year, the virus has spread to nearly every Bangladeshi district. The total number of cases has risen to 1.5 million with 27,007 deaths so far. More than 14 million or 8.3% of the population have been fully vaccinated since the beginning of the COVID vaccination campaign seven months ago. Undeterred by challenges, a specially abled artist in eastern India has not lost hope despite losing his both hands and one leg in a train accident in 2012. He has continued to follow his passion for painting, which has now become his identity. There is no dearth of talent on earth. In India's eastern state, Kupaneshwar too, there is an artist with a unique talent who does not have both hands and one leg, yet it has not stopped him from following his passion for painting. 26-year-old Prabhakar Pradhan faced a major tragedy when he lost both his hands and right leg in a train accident in 2012 but has kept his passion for painting alive and today it has become his identity. The young artist specializes in painting idols of Hindu gods including Ganesha, Krishna and Jagannath and goddess Saraswati and also landscapes on everyday items like bottles, cups and pots. खुद सोचना चाहेगा ये कर सकेगा ही नहीं खुद नहीं कर सकेंगे कोई नहीं सोचेगा तो कर नहीं सकेंगे तो वो नहीं कर सकेंगे कभी मुझे याद आता है पेंटिंग करना हम नहीं करेंगे तो कैसे होगा ये बोतल सामने है इसको हम उठा नहीं सकेंगे तो क्यों बोतल को पकड़ना है भरोसा चाहिए बोतल हम उठा सकेंगे इसको भरोसा चाहिए भरोसा नहीं रहने से कुछ भी नहीं कर सकते इट टेक प्रभाकर अबाउट 40 टू 45 मिनट्स टू फिनिश वन पेंटिंग he has also received many awards for his paintings. He believes that all people need to conquer challenges is willpower. And if people to believe in their talent and continue to work hard, they will achieve success. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianNewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.